One of the coolest things that Nintendo has put out is the Nintendo Switch. And the Nintendo Switch has these guys, Joy-Cons, which really are the reason why it's awesome. You can dock it, take off the Joy-Cons, and you have a controller, or go on the go when you have a handheld device. Hence the Switch. But this thing is also its fatal flaw. All manufacturer issues aside, I simply want to talk about the ergonomics. As an adult with normal sized hands, this thing is not comfortable at all. And there are options out there to fix that, but I think that they're kind of lame. The first option is this. Cases. Mm, oftentimes, cheap, easy, snap onto your Switch like this, and you have basically beefed up your Nintendo Switch, and now you have a beefy little handheld situation. But it doesn't fix the Joy-Con thumbsticks. These guys are absurdly low. And so when it comes to games that require any sort of precision on the go, you're just not gonna have the best gaming experience. Not to mention the buttons are small and there's no real D-pad. If you're a D-pad fan like myself, you're just gonna have to miss out. Now, I don't think that these are terrible, I just don't like them. Because another thing that this does is it completely changes the design language of the Nintendo Switch. And one thing I really like about the Nintendo Switch is the way it looks. It's beautiful. It's sick. It's the same reason I don't buy cases for my iPhones. Yes, this extremely expensive piece of machinery is out in the open. And my phone is always out in the open because I think it looks nice. It looks really, really sleek. The design is there and I don't want to hide that. Well, how do you fix that issue? I think you switch out the Joy-Cons. So first I'm going to compare this to the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is bulky, but in being bulky, it actually has the things that you want when you are using a controller or a handheld device. The thumbsticks are in a raised position. They are actually high enough to give you some sort of accuracy. The buttons are larger, so it feels like a normal controller, and the triggers and buttons on the shoulders are full. These right here are very, very important because it gives you a full hand feel. And that's awesome, and yeah, giggle if you want. So there are multiple ones out on the market, the Binbok ones or the Hori ones, and you know what? The ones that actually surprised me were the Hori Split Pad Compacts. And the reason why these surprised me is because when I first unboxed them, I thought they felt cheap. They're very, very light, they feel like just plastic buttons. They don't have any sort of power to them. They have to be attached and they don't have rumble or amiibo support. So I'm like, what's the point? They're missing pretty much every feature that makes a Joy-Con a Joy-Con. Well, they're comfortable, very comfortable. And better yet, they don't disrupt the design language of the Nintendo Switch, especially that Nintendo Switch OLED. Bezel-less, gorgeous the way it looks, the colors are bright, so slapping on an additional outer shell that gives you handles that stick out to the side, it just feels clunky. And it doesn't fix the thumbstick issue. And so I did use the Skull & Co branded one with multiple types of depths to the handles. And though it felt good and it came with a case and it was nice and robust, I had to use risers for my thumbsticks. And so risers and the additional grips felt the best. It actually felt really good. And it was comfortable enough to play for longer gaming sessions, but it looked terrible. I wasn't excited to hold it. In technology to me, it should feel exciting. You should want to interact with it. And that's part of the reason why we get these things because they look great. And where the split pad compacts come in is they attach to the switch and don't disrupt the design language by much at all. They add a very slight bump to the back. The triggers and the shoulder buttons feel nice and robust. They're big enough to actually feel good. The buttons are clicky, they're larger, and it has a D-pad. But most of all, the thumbsticks are higher. And so you don't have to do this. Bend at the thumb. You can rest your thumb here and play it like that. And that right there I think is huge. Now a couple things that are added features that I don't think actually sell this to me. The back buttons. You can map these. They're convenient to map if you're someone who likes back buttons. Now these aren't powered so if you map A to this back button you can't map Y or X to this one. They don't communicate with each other. So you can only map the buttons on the Joy-Con in one hand and on this one. They both do have those back buttons though. And so this one is effectively useless. I don't know why you would map like an up or down. I guess for Fortnite, if you want to ping something. Another thing it has is a turbo button. 
and the turbo button's very convenient when it comes to games like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, where the conversation is absurdly long. You map the B button, and it's just gonna pressing it over and over again, and boom, you don't have to sit there and read all that text, unless you of course want to. I think that those two features are really nice, but again, they don't sell these to me. Now, I do think that these are about $10 overpriced. These do retail at 50. The comfort and the actual excitement to play my Switch on the couch while I'm laying in bed, out and about, is genuinely there. And that is worth every penny. Because when I bring my Switch out and about with me and I don't have these, my gaming sessions are short. Now, I do think there are a couple issues. Issue number one, of course, price we mentioned, and two is cases. I am a huge TomTok fan. Huge, with the exception of their grip case. I think it's no good at all. But I'm a huge TomTok fan. I think their cases are awesome. And their slim case is what I use on my Switch because it fits amazingly. But these don't fit any of those cases. In fact, Hori sells a case for this, but it's a flimsy case and very rough with my stuff. And so I want more of a hard shell case. So that's one thing to take into consideration. The way I work around it is I actually just put normal Joy-Cons on my Switch. And if I know I'm gonna be out for a while, I'll actually just toss these in my bag in one of the zipper pockets and I feel great. I'm not too worried about these when they're off. I'm a lot more worried about these when they're off. So that's awesome. That's really about it. I think that honestly, the only real problem I have is I think they're just $10 too expensive, but I still recommend them because they fix the problems, which are thumbstick too low, buttons too small, and ergonomics are just not there. Slap these suckers on there and you're good to go. They also make the Split Pad Pro, which is a much larger version, but that just makes your Switch look silly. And this right here does not make your Switch look silly. And that's important. Don't look silly. So if you had this problem, so if you feel this at all, hit that like button, because you're not alone. Subscribe if you want more of these videos. And most of all, happy gaming. So here's a list of a bunch of Nintendo Switch videos if you want to check it out. All right, take it easy.